the I am. I am. <laughs> this is it, baby. So the only way that you can fully embrace the human, like when you watch a film and the characters do things, you kind of have all these feelings towards it, but there's also a relaxedness with it, a relaxedness and acceptance of the character and the way it is. And the only way to fully accept being an animal and this animal having all sorts of wants and all sorts of thoughts and all sorts of behaviours, the only way to fully accept that is to see that that animal is not experiencing but is being experienced. That's not who you are. Who you are is infinite possibility, infinite mystery, and is beyond that. Pardon me. And it's got two qualities to it. It's got this empty looking, this conscious recognition of all things, and this I am, you are. Not you are a name, you are a personality, or you're a memory. The you are, this is. And those two qualities are always present. Everywhere you go, everything you do, if you run away from this talk, if you stop listening, there is still that conscious presence, that I am, that alive sense of being. And everything comes and goes in it. We think that this moment is a result of all the things that have come before. But this moment isn't a result of all the things that have come before. This moment always is. Oh, Elango, please stop. I ha My phone's in the other room. I can't be bothered to get up and get it. I'm sure you guys can hear it. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so there is this presence, this moment that's always here. And your thoughts about the past, your image of the past, your image of the future, rise always here. This moment is the continuous. Like when did the last moment end and this moment begin? So earlier, say if you were at the shops, when was the cutting off of the moment? And the beginning of the next moment? Or you see it's always this continuous moment, this presence, and in that the forms, the colours, the situations, the people, the voices, the sounds, the ideas, the memories, the visions, all of those come and go in this one ever-present moment, this endless moment. And this moment is presence. This moment is the I am, is everything, and nothing, the consciousness. The empty looking and that sense of being, and that sense of being and the empty looking is perfectly still on one side and is all things and movement on the other side. And those things are never really moving anywhere, they're happening in itself, as itself. It's always stillness appearing as movement.
And this is who you are. This still presence that's always here. And that presence is all things. Everything you look at is appearing in presence. You think I'm present and I'm inside the body, but everything is appearing in presence. Your vision isn't happening inside of the body. Your vision is all things that appear. Your hearing is all sounds that appear. Your feeling is all things that appear to be felt. All of your senses are everything that's sensed. You're not located inside the body experiencing things. That's an idea that you've learned, that you've been taught. Come back to your direct experience and it will be seen there's nobody experiencing everything. There's nothing experiencing everything. Everything is nothing. And this is who you truly are. This alive presence that's free of morality, of guilt, of blame. But yet all those things appear in it and come and go. But there's nobody that is guilty experiencing this. There is nobody that is ashamed that's experiencing this. It's so simple. The gift is your presence. Your gift is what's happening, is you. This is who you are. This is waking up. This doesn't make you a perfect person. Because humans aren't these good, perfect persons. Humans are the apparent evolution of animals. And animals aren't. <laughs> and evolution isn't nice. It's about evolving and surviving. Like in order for us to eat, we have to take from something else. We have to eat the animal, we have to eat the plant. In order for us to survive, we have to destroy other things in the dream. Animals, we aren't nice animals. Niceness appears in us only because it's an evolutionary product. Because community and surviving together works for us. Getting on works for us, and that's a beautiful quality, and I'm so for encouraging that in society, but not at the extent of denying the other side. The denial of the other side is where the dark things, real dark things happen. The denial of the darkness is when people secretly do very nasty things. And they're not even to blame or guilty, guilty of it really, ultimately, even though they have to take responsibility on the human level. They're an effect of the evolution of this species and the denial and the suppression of our dark side. When we make friends with our dark side, then it becomes integrated in society. And it doesn't go off on these random, bizarre, rageful shooting sprees of shooting hundreds of people because you feel victim to society and what it's done when you realise that you are a part of that too, that you also are that animal, then you're not a victim to the animal of society. I'm not saying that as a society we can't strive for better things, but denial and repression of what we are isn't the best way for us to survive and to move forward to a more peaceful society. I'm learning French at the moment, like you all know, and um, <laughs> the amount of P's and V's they have. Je ne peux pas, je ne peux pas. Je veux, vous voulez. I mean, the amount of V's and P's the French have, it's, uh, One thing that concerned me originally about being a speaker, and I've sort of come more and more, peace, more and more at peace with, is that people have this projection onto me that I'm a really lovely person, and that I'm really a kind person. And on one side I am, but I'm also all types of things. I can also be grumpy and selfish and mean, and 
Um, and I felt like, well, how, how can I let people have these projections of me? I don't want to always have to be saying I can also be grumpy and mean and because also I see myself in a really positive light and I don't think about those things. But at the same time, it seems unbalanced that people are thinking these things. And I just realized that it was an inevitable part of it because often when people come to non-duality, you know, they've come from difficult times and what they're longing for is another human being that will embrace them and love them because they might have had been hammered a lot by life and had some really unkind things that like humans do super mean, mean things to each other, especially when they're unconscious of their actions. And so then they look to somebody that's enlightened to give them that. And then they, they project so hardly that so strongly onto that person. And then they can feel so hurt and disappointed by that person. And this is when you, you know, you can do things that are against yourself. You know, this is how you could, could get into a difficult situation with the, with the teacher because you have this projection that they are only goodness. They are only one side of the coin. And and then you can feel taken advantage of because you have all these expectations of what that person's going to give you. And you feel if you do a certain amount of things for that person, they'll give you that attention, that love that you're craving for, that friendship or whatever. You know, I'm really not going to the I am much tonight. <laughs> I conned you. I brought you into the talk saying I'd talk about the I am. And I've talked so much about God knows what. But just let my words take you to that unknown place. Gong Hei Fat Choi. <laughs> From Comella. Happy New Year. Wishing you and Khaleesi an amazing year of the dog. Oh yeah, we're in the year of the dog. Love and gratitude, Carmela and Felix.